well 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 here we go let's take a look the first question state the principle of conservation of linear momentum in words can you state that for me can you state 4.1 for me the principle of conservation of linear momentum in words well the total linear momentum in an isolated system remains constant what are we saying We're saying that the total linear momentum in an isolated system remains constant the sum of the momentum before a collision or an explosion not only a collision right because momentum is also conserved in a explosion as we will see in this question but anyway stories let's go ahead and do 4.2 so 4.2 calculate the distance traveled by trolley b in 1.3 seconds quite a unique question in that for the most part usually we are supposed to calculate vf vi the mass you know something like that but in this question we are asked to calculate the distance travel by trolley b in 1.3 seconds but let's take a look at our question statement and see what is going on so two trolleys a and b of mass 3.2 kg and 2.6 kg respectively are held at rest on a straight horizontal frictionless track with a compressed spring between them as shown in the diagram below so here in front of us before the spring is released okay and then here it's after the spring is released right as you can see after the spring is released trolley a moves with a velocity of 0.4 meters per second to the left while trolley b moves with an unknown velocity that is the information we have so let's take a look at 4.2. We're supposed to calculate the distance traveled by trolley B in 1.3 seconds. The mark allocation is 5 marks. So 4.1, I had to state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. So my guess is that I'm going to have to use it in 4.2, right? But then the question is a bit tricky. It says calculate the distance. So to some people, it might not be obvious that we still need to use the conservation of linear momentum. But let me show you how we can do that. Well, we know that the sum of momentum before is equal to the sum of momentum after. But what is happening before the explosion? We have two objects and a spring in between. So we can take those masses as one individual mass. But, you know, we don't have to do that. Let's separate the masses. Yeah, because some people will argue that there's a spring in between, so it's not one mass. So let's have M1, V1, plus M2, V2, when it goes to M1, V1, plus M2, V2. This is before the explosion, and this is after the explosion. So let's see how we can solve this problem. So before the explosion, we have the two objects that are held at rest. So M1, the mass of trolley A, that is going to be 3.2 multiplied by 0, plus M2, 2.6 multiplied by 0, and after the explosion, not the collision in this special case of ours, the mass conserved 3.2, velocity, let's take direction to the left as, to the right is positive, so to the left is negative. So we're going to have minus 0 0.4 plus 2.6. V2 is what we are interested in. So let's leave that like that. On the left-hand side, obviously, this gives us 0. This gives us 0. 0 plus 0. I think it is supposed to be 0. If not, if not what? 0 plus 0 is 0. There's no other alternative. And then on the right-hand side, 3.2 multiplied by minus 0 0.4. That is minus 1.28 plus 2.6 V2. It should be obvious what we need to do in this case. 1.28 is equal to 2.6 V2. We didn't take 1.28 to the left hand side. We added 1.28 to both sides. We cannot take things in math. But anyway, let's carry on. V2, divide both sides by 2.6. Right, so V2 is equal to, what is 1.28 divided by 2.6? That is 0. Point, it is the final answer. No, it's not the final answer. So I cannot round off to two decimal places. I have to round off to four. So this is 0. 
two three meters per second that this is the final velocity of trolley b after uh, the spring is extended but we are interested in the distance let's take a look we have its initial velocity when it starts traveling we don't have its final velocity because they're not necessarily coming to rest after they've traveled but our track is frictionless is frictionless let me show you why i'm emphasizing on that the forces that are acting on that object is the weight and the normal force we don't have any force applied no no we don't have any force applied as it moves and then we don't have any frictional force so the acceleration here is zero right so the acceleration of the object is zero we have that and then we have the time the time is 1.3 so we have that we're interested on delta x so how can we calculate that with these variables take a look equations of motions delta x vi delta t plus a half acceleration delta t squared don't ask me if you're going to get the mark if you use d is equals to s multiplied by t don't ask me because i don't have the answer i use equations of motions i use the equations on the formula sheet i don't come up with my own equations so don't ask me i don't have an answer for that but if you use this equation then you're supposed to have delta x is equals to vi we just calculated it 0 0.4923 delta t 1.3 plus a half acceleration is zero like we've said the time is still 1.3 and we square that this gives us zero obviously so we can just concentrate on this so delta x 0 0.4923 multiplied by 1.3 okay i just substituted the wrong thing in my calculator multiply by 1.3 so let's take a look i'm getting delta x being equals to 0 0.64 meters so there we go that is the distance traveled by trolley b in 1.3 seconds right then 4.3 let's take a look the average force exerted by the extended spring on each trolley while they were in contact with the spring was 4.2 newtons okay then 4.3 calculate the time it took the spring to extend to its natural length three marks what an interesting question it is the first time i actually come across a question like this and the rest assured i've solved a lot of these questions but i've never came across a question saying i must calculate the natural length of a string this is oh well the time it took for the spring to extend to its natural length this is the first but let's take a look at the variables right we have the force that the spring uh, exists on the two trolleys and then we're interested on the time which other variable do we have we have the change well the impulse the change in a momentum of uh a and b we have the change in momentum of those objects so we have delta p then how can we find delta t if we have the force and delta p we can say that f is equals to the rate in change in momentum right this is newton's again law in terms of momentum so now we can see that uh, the force is 4.2 the change in momentum let's use object a i'm using object a because i didn't have to calculate the final velocity of object a right what if my final velocity for object b is wrong and i use it in 4.3 i don't want to count on positive marking so to stay on the safe side i'm going to use object a because the values are given to me i'm not using my own values that is wisdom right there so the mass of object a that is 3.2 final velocity is 0 0.4 and the initial is zero right when the spring is still um what do we call this when the spring is yet to be released right coiled up in a way and then we divide this by delta t so delta t should be equal to 3.2 multiplied by 0 0.4 divided by 4.2 
let me go ahead and put that in my calculator so 3.2 multiplied by 0 0.4 divided by 4.2 what's happening what do i get 0 0.3 so there we go it takes 0 0.3 seconds for this spring to extend to its natural length right quite a trick equation it's not obvious yeah I'm, I'm sure it was not obvious to some of the people right 4.4 i must say examiner, examiners are getting like uh, more creative yeah the questions we are seeing they are really cutting edge uh anyway stories 4.4 trolley b is now replaced by trolley c which has a larger mass okay we have replaced trolley b let's say trolley c has five cages and see what happens the same compressed spring is placed between trolleys A and C. The trolleys are then released. The average force exerted by the extended spring on the trolleys remains at 4.2 neutrons for the same period of time as calculated above. How does the magnitude of the velocity of trolley C compare to that of uh, trolley B? After the magnitude of the velocity, that is, after the spring has fallen to the track, right? Only greater than, less than, or equal to. So it will be less than less than why am i saying less than let me know in the comments why is the velocity the magnitude of velocity of the trolley c with the larger mass gonna be less than that of b i'm interested in your answer for this question let me know in the comments apart from that which video do you want me to do next here we go